I thank God. So glory be to God this morning. I'm just um, happy in my spirit. I'm celebrating God. I praise God because God is good and he deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. So this morning's sermon is, I am blessed. And this still is in our Cycles versus Curses series. And this is part three. I am blessed. We're coming from Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse, third verse through the fifth chapter and 12th verse. It it is a, a lot of scriptures and I'm going to read quickly. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those which had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people with Gal from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Glory to God. Bear with me just a moment. Well, well, to God be the glory. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Hallelujah. We are just read the 10th verse, the 11th verse. Just when, when you hear the blank, when we pause out, just give God praise, give God glory. It's all right. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Now we're looking, we're listening at a scripture, and like I said, the word for the mor this morning, the message topic is, I am blessed. So we've heard Jesus teach his disciples. He was healing the sick. He was healing those with palsy, all manner of diseases. Jesus was healing and the people got word and they were coming. So that there was a huge crowd. And so when after Jesus uh, worked, wrought the works of God of the kingdom among them, he went up into a mountain. <clears throat> and when he found his place, the Bible tells us, the disciples came to him and there Jesus began to teach. Because 
and and what we saw was Jesus was often detoxing the minds of the disciples. He was preparing them for ministry, ministry in a life without him physically being among them. So what he would do, they would have to do, but they weren't to be cocky. They weren't to be haughty. They weren't to, weren't to lord over God's people. They did what Jesus did and followed his examples. Now what we're telling you, so that you don't get arrogant and think that uh, just because you do these wonderful things or magnificent things, that makes you uh, better than anybody or higher than anybody or uh, more loved than anybody. I'm going to teach you, um, this is Jesus, I'm paraphrasing, what it really means to be blessed. And that's when he says, blessed are those that are poor in spirit. So we think that people who have it all, we think that's what blessings mean. We think that when everything is going all right all the time, that means you're blessed. But no, Jesus is saying, for the poor in spirit, I may be feeling down right now, but uh, I'm, I'm poor in my spirit. Hallelujah. But he says, theirs, those that are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. They're going through challenges and triumphs, but they're going to be comforted. Why? Because even through their mourning, they have their mind on me. They're trusting in me. I'm going to comfort them. Blessed are the meek, those that are hungry, those that are merciful. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing everything. I'm comforting. I'm providing. I'm giving what they need that they're filled. Hallelujah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall surely see God. It's not talking about material things. If you notice, that's what this teaching is. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So this gives you an idea of what we ought to be doing as well. That means we ought to be uh, peacemaking. Hallelujah. Not stirring up strife, but bringing peace. And then he comes to say, blessed are they which are persecuted. We don't like being persecuted. It doesn't feel good all the time. It doesn't feel good when people are not receiving us and what we're saying. But he's saying, blessed are they which are persecuted, especially when it's for righteousness sake. Mm, for theirs is once again the kingdom of heaven. They have the best thing. Hallelujah. And then blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Because you know people will lie on you. You know they don't like you. The first thing they say is y'all supposed to be saved. Y'all church folks, you ain't this and you ain't that. And then they'll make up a lie if they can. They'll twist the truth or twist your words if they can. And you feel so bad about it. But then Jesus is teaching, blessed are ye when they do it. And it says, rejoice and be exceeding glad. Hallelujah. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And not only that. They persecuted Jesus too. Hallelujah. And that doesn't mean he wasn't blessed. That really means he was blessed because he had a great reward. reward. And we can't get caught up in the things in the, in the uh, things of life here because there is another home for us. And this is a temporary place and a temporary uh, uh, situation. But I want you to know that blessed that means if you if it is defined by the dictionary, you'll find that blessed can, will mean happiness. It'll mean blissfulness. It's not a just about getting things in the natural, but it's being happy. Don't you know it's something that when you're poor, you're still happy and joyful in life and at peace and loving God. When you don't have everything that a billionaire has or a millionaire has, you can still have joy in your life. Hallelujah. And God still promises to take care of your needs. Hallelujah. We don't have to have excess. 
but he'll take care of our needs. And then when you got the right mind and your attitude, you never know what God will do, uh, even above what you what you need. Hallelujah. He blesses you with other things, too. So in this scripture that we talked about this morning, uh, that the it was written in Greek originally, and the Greek word was makinos, mak, makarios, which I'm not Greek, so I'm pronouncing it the best way I can. Forgive me if it's not right. Makarios. And this translates into a word that means happy or blissful. That's the same definition of happy. So Jesus is saying, happy are you, happy are you. So what I'm saying is if the refrigerator is not full, we are still happy. Jesus already told us that happy, hallelujah. We're happy when we're, we're poor, hallelujah. We're happy, not that he wants us to be poor, but he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they in the morning. These are the opposite of what we think. So I'm letting you know that just because you are in a state where physically you may not have, or physically you may not have what you want, but you have what you need. I still want you to be happy because we know the provider. We know the way maker. And then also in, in this word, it, it also can translate into being safe. And be at rest, meaning be at peace. That's what the state that we should be in, a happy, restful, peaceful state, knowing that we are safe no matter what. And uh, that same word is used in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. So it means happy, blessed. And if you bless someone, that means you're giving them special favor, special mercy, or special benefit. And we know that uh, favor is a type of kindness beyond what is usual. So what my money, what my money can't do, hallelujah, God's favor can do because it's God's mercy beyond what is usual. So the credit report may say, I don't qualify, but the favor of God will turn that thing around and it will say, I do. It will put you in people's heart. Hallelujah. Where something that they wouldn't normally do for you, they would extend mercy or special favor and do it. That is living in the favor of God. Hallelujah. And we used to see uh, here, we used to always say favor is better than money because favor can do what money can do. Hallelujah. Because my money may not stretch there, but favor will get me there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are in God's favor, it will open doors for you that may otherwise be closed. Uh, so I say live in the favor of God. Live in the protection of God. Walk up right before your God and trust him. Hallelujah. And I, so when Jesus is saying that you're blessed, when other folk will say, ah, that don't look good for them. I'm going to do I'm going to think like Jesus think because it, we used to sing a song that says, if God said it, that settles it. We know that God has the final word. Hallelujah. If he said it, that settles it. So what I'm saying this morning, think about your life. It's easy to praise God. It's easy to be happy when everything is going all right. It's easy to be happy when the sun is always shining. But can you be happy when you're still praying about something where God hasn't answered yet? When God gives you an instruction and tells you to do something, tells you to preach his word, tells you to, to um, serve him or do a particular service, can you still do it when your prayer seems not to be answered, when he's delayed uh, giving you what you asked him for at a particular time? Can you still worship? When the deadline has come and gone and you didn't see what you needed for the deadline, hallelujah, but can you still worship? Do you know how to still be happy? Is there still a praise in your mouth? Hallelujah. And uh, there, there is, uh, you have to keep yourself in the state of being happy, in a state of blessedness, 
in the state of peace and a state of rest. Uh, and I remember a, a scripture and it has an Acts 26 and 2 where Paul said, I think myself happy. And the full scripture says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused. What is Paul talking about? Paul had come before the king. Paul had been um, arrested. Paul had been um taken captive because he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and it would seem that that's not a state of being blessed, uh, but he is. If you go by what Jesus was teaching, Paul was still blessed. Uh, and Paul said, I think myself happy to be able to come to you and defend myself uh, about my savior, about the things that I preach. And that's what Jesus is saying. When they persecute you, and revile you for my sake. Huh? He's letting us know we're blessed, uh, that we should be happy. And Paul, in the situation he was in, he was happy. And so, and I would say a lot of times I would be going through, I would be going through different trials and different challenges. And that spirit of depression would try to come in. That spirit that would cause you to make you feel dis in despair, makes you feel like you can't get a breakthrough, makes you feel like there's no hope and it makes you feel hapless, hopeless, hopelessness. Uh, but I feel in my spirit, uh, Holy Ghost in my belly, and it makes you fight against that thing. We don't succumb when the enemy comes whispering in our ear. We don't succumb. We don't do like Eve and agree with the enemy. We go the opposite of what the devil is saying because we know depression and oppression is not of God. So then what do we do? We do like Paul and think ourselves happy. And then you may say, how do you think yourself happy? And then I have to direct you to Philippians, uh, the, uh, eight, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse says, uh, and this is still Paul talking and he has taught the people of God. And then at the end of his message, he's saying, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely and whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on those things. You ought to think on good thoughts. Huh? And I, I, when I saw Peter Pan in the cartoon, the Disney uh, movie, the, the, the character would say, think happy thoughts, think happy thoughts. You ain't going to have to think happy thoughts. Think about the good things. Wash your mind and stop thinking about negativity and thinking about evil. Reflect on the scripture and what God says about it and the good things of the kingdom that God has promised in his word. And verse 9 says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. It was Paul talking, but I'm saying the same. Do those things that you have seen and heard. Do. And the God of peace, this is a promise, shall be with you. And before that, in verse 7, it says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Aren't you so glad that you know Jesus and that you're never without hope uh, that Jesus left the comforter and he abides with you. He's on the inside of you and joy is in your belly. Hallelujah. You just have to tap in and make your thoughts line up, make your mouth and your thoughts line up and agree with God and not the enemy. Hallelujah. And you can think yourself happy and you can Think yourself blessed. Hallelujah. And in your homes, you can say with me, I am blessed. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes and shows you otherwise, remind yourself, I am blessed. How do you know I'm blessed? Because Jesus told me I'm blessed. His word tells me I'm blessed. I am blessed and I am not cursed. Hallelujah. I am the head and I'm not the tail. I am above and I'm not beneath. Like the word we got on Wednesday night. Remember who you are. Remember 
whose you are. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I am the seed of the righteous and I belong to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then Psalms 112 in the King James Version will tell us about the righteous. Hallelujah. And it says, Hallelujah. Happy is anyone who fears Adonai. That means fears our Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments, in his word. And the Bible tells me, it says, his descendants uh, will be powerful on the earth, uh, a blessed generation, an upright people. It says, wealth and riches are in his house, uh, and his righteousness stands forever. Hallelujah. To the upright, he shines like a light in the dark, uh, merciful, compassionate, and righteous. Glory be to God. Things go well with the person who is merciful and lends, who conducts his affairs with fairness, for he will never be moved. The righteous will be remembered forever, not because of their righteousness necessarily, but because they've taken on the righteousness of Christ. And then when we take on Christ's righteousness, we do our best to make ourselves conform to his word conform to the word of God and that's how we live in peace because we know we harm nobody and when the enemy comes for us we can say Lord you know judge between me and them and I've harmed nobody and I've done them no wrong and see how the reward of uh, uh, evil for my good and God will the same God that we sung about that we heard them praising about uh, the same God who is in our front in our back in a and up beneath and all around us surrounding us with his spirit he will fight for us and so why well, since we know who we are and since we know who we are we could go down to the 8th verse which says his heart is set firm that means my heart is set firm I'm not going to panic when something happens it says he will not be afraid and f till finally he looks up in triumph at his enemies hallelujah he distributes freely he gives to the poor his righteousness stands forever his power will be increased honorably meaning i don't have to do stuff to get power i don't have to fight against somebody and backstab to get power it comes to me authority comes to me because i woke up right before the lord and because i am the head and not the tail that is the word of god and verse 10 says the wicked will be angry when they see it they will gnash with their teeth and waste away yeah they may grit about it but there's nothing they can do about it because psalms 23 says he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies why they didn't want me to have it they didn't want me to get it they didn't want me to be there but i'm there anyhow hallelujah not gloating but resting in my god hallelujah the desires of the wicked will come to nothing. When you're blessed, there's nothing the devil can do about it. There's nothing the rich or the root worker can do about it. Hallelujah. What God has blessed, no man can curse. Are you blessed? Then let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Clap your hands and give God praise. Pick up the rock of the word. Hallelujah. Your rock of praise. Give God praise and give him glory and tell God, tell the world, hallelujah, tell yourself, I am blessed. Thank you, Jesus.